Hello and welcome back. Today I want to continue talking about impedance matching, signal transfer and transformers. Last time I looked at the ideally coupled transformer and today I will be looking at what can be done when the transformer does not have an ideal coupling. So even with reduced coupling factors, it is possible to get decent energy or signal transfer. But unfortunately, this will no longer be a wide band phenomenon, since we will need to apply various compensation methods to account for the various reactances that appear in the circuit when the non-ideal coupling occurs. And this will only apply at specific frequencies. So if you're curious about some of these methods, then keep watching. So let's start off by looking at what non-ideal coupling actually means. So basically in the real life transformer, not all of the magnetic field created by the primary is shared with the secondary. So for various reasons, there will be a part of the magnetic field that does not go through the secondary winding. For a power transformer built with a continuous magnetic core, this unshared field is usually very small. But for other applications like an intermediate frequency signal transformer or most wireless energy transfer applications, the coupling is far more reduced. So let's look at this phenomenon in the simulator a bit. So let's start off by looking at an ideal situation. So what I got here is an ideally coupled transformer, 1 to 1 turns ratio and inductance ratio, 100 microhenry on each side, and then I'm driving this with a 50 ohm signal source into a 50 ohm final load. So if we look at the response of this circuit, since there's no extra capacitance added, what we end up with is a low frequency high pass corner frequency, after which the response flattens out at minus six decibels. So this minus six decibel is the point where we would be if there would be absolutely no transformer. Now, on the other hand, if we do set a specific coupling factor, so a non-ideal lower than 100%, say we go for a 60% coupled transformer, so I left everything else exactly the same, we got the same signal source, same load, same inductance value, it's just that the coupling factor was changed. If we look at the response of this circuit compared to the ideal transformer, we see a slightly different response. So there's two things to observe here. First of all, we're never reaching the minus six decibel point, we're always having a smaller coupling than the ideal transformer. And secondly, we get a high frequency low pass filter effect. So we're not just getting a low frequency limit, we're also getting a high frequency limit. Now, if we were to explore this phenomenon a bit more, so go for a transformer that has an even lower coupling factor, so this one goes down to 40%, we can see that here the effects are even more pronounced. So even less signal is being passed through the transformer and we're getting an even smaller corner frequency at higher frequencies. Now that's not very good. Now in a previous video where I looked at impedance matching, one of the ways to get rid of unwanted reactive elements was to add some sort of equivalent reactance but of the opposing sign. So to add a capacitor to cancel out an inductor or vice versa. Now, of course, this only works at one specific frequency. So the resonance frequency, because this is the only place where the two reactances are actually equal. So this is a frequency dependent phenomenon. Now, this can be applied with transformers also. So we can create tuned transformers, but they will only work at clearly defined frequencies. So this will not be a wideband solution. So now let's try to apply this resonance principle here. Now I found four main ways in which this resonant coupling can be achieved and two more extra say bonus ways in which you can combine the primary four. So you can have single capacitors on one side of the transformer, so either in series or in parallel, or you can have dual capacitors both in series or both in parallel, so on each side of the transformer. And you can combine the initial methods, so have a single capacitor in series or in parallel, or if you're feeling really generous, use four capacitors, two in series, two in parallel. Now, is there a difference between all of these? Well, of course there is. So now let's look at all of them one by one to see which might be best suited for your particular application. 
Now, for the sake of simplicity, all the circuits have a 1 to 100 microhenry inductor transformer with a coupling factor being set globally by a parameter statement. And to get a sense of how the circuit works over multiple frequencies, the capacitor value is being stepped through different values so you can see the behavior of the circuit without going too deeply into the mathematics behind it. So if we run the simulation, I also prepared an ideal transformer, so 100 microhenry with an ideal coupling, and a non-ideal transformer, so that has the coupling factor that we have in all of the other circuits. So we have some sort of reference to which we can compare the other circuits. So if we start off with the single capacitor in series, and we just zoom in a bit, we see that we are getting resonance peaks, so we are getting improved transfer at specific frequencies, but all of these frequencies are to the right side, so to higher frequencies than the self-resonance of the non-ideal transformer. And now if we also look at the single parallel circuit, we can see a similar story, but on the other side of the self-resonance of the standalone transformer. So we're getting resonance frequencies at lower than the self-resonance of the non-ideal transformer. But interestingly enough, regarding these two spikes to the left, we are getting better transfer rates than with the ideal transformer. So at relatively low frequencies, adding the parallel capacitor will improve the transfer of the transformer even beyond where it was with the ideally coupled inductors. Now, in the process of design, it might also be important to observe the DC behavior of the circuit. So having the resonant elements in parallel also allows the passage of a DC current through the inductor. So this parallel approach is quite common in amplifiers where the resonant circuit is the only thing placed in the collector of the transistor. The series circuit would not really allow a DC supply voltage, so the circuit would not work. And on the other hand, in something like a push-pull amplifier, where you do not want to have a DC current, the series approach is superior. Here, the parallel circuit would not be that helpful. So now, let's see what happens if we add the second capacitor, so to have two in series or two in parallel. When we add two capacitors in series, again we're getting resonance frequencies to the right side of the self-resonance of the non-ideal transformer, but this time we're getting two resonance frequencies. So this is also called a double-tuned transformer. Now in certain cases the two resonance frequencies will merge to form a single resonance frequency, so this depends on the quality factor and the coupling factor of the circuit. So you can get the two separated or single one. Now we are much closer to the ideal response, so we're getting better coupling factors this time. And now if we look at the double capacitors in parallel, we are getting a similar story, but on the left side, so at lower frequencies. So again, double resonance with very good coupling, so better than ideal. And now if we just complicate things a bit, so add all of the measurements at the same time, what we can make out is that the double tuned transformer has better coupling than the single tuned transformer. So if you want to have the utmost efficiency, double tuning will provide a bit more. And finally, if we have a combination of both series and parallel capacitor, we kind of get the best of both worlds. So with both the series and parallel capacitors, we have four distinct resonance frequencies, both below and above the self-resonance of the transformer. And these resonances correspond to where the individual resonances were on the single series or single parallel capacitor circuits. So as long as the resonances on those circuits were above or below the self-resonance, we have the exact same frequencies. When they were below the self-resonance, then we don't see them. In a similar fashion, if we now look at the four capacitor circuits, so both series and parallel capacitors, we are getting the same story. So with the both parallel and series capacitors, we're getting all of the resonance frequencies both below and above the self-resonance of the transformer. And resonances are roughly in the same place where they were with the double capacitors in series or the double capacitors in parallel. So maybe some small shifts occur, but they're mainly in the same places. Of course, it's easier to get just one resonance circuit to be tuned, so just to have a single capacitor, but the double tuned circuit with both parallel or both series capacitors is giving better bandwidth and better coupling results. So when the utmost efficiency is needed or the highest bandwidth, this double tuned approach will be the best. 
Now regarding the various combinations of circuits, so having both parallel and series, to a certain extent they will not really be that useful. Since if you know exactly the transformer properties and whether you are below or above its self resonance, you can simply go for one of the simpler circuits. The fewer the components you have to fine tune, the easier it will be to adjust the circuit and get it to work correctly. Now let's look at the various values and resonance frequencies coupled with the variation of the coupling factor in a bit more detail. So for this I will also be stepping the coupling factor to various values to see how this impacts the resonance frequency of the various circuits. Since each of the four circuits has slightly different laws governing how the resonance frequencies can be determined. So if we now run the simulation and we start off with the easier circuit, so the single capacitor in parallel, when we're changing the capacitor value we can see that the resonance frequency is changing, but interestingly enough when we change the coupling factor we see that the resonance frequencies are always in the same place. So for this circuit the coupling factor doesn't really impact the resonance frequency. On the other hand if we now look at the single series circuit we see that this time the resonance frequencies are varying based on the coupling factor. So for this particular circuit you're not just interested in the inductor and capacitor values, you're also interested in the coupling factor to determine the exact resonance point. Now if we look at the double tuned circuits, so first of all two capacitors in parallel, we can see that all of the resonances are roughly in the same place, but the center frequency again is coupling factor dependent. So we can see that the center frequency is varying based on the exact coupling factor. And in a similar fashion if we go to the double capacitors in series, again we see a variation of the resonance frequency based on the coupling factor. So they're always roughly in the same place, but they're not exactly in the same place. In the end, even if you do not have ideal coupling, you can still get close to ideal energy transfer under specific conditions. Constructing resonance circuits will allow the transfer of more energy, but this will be limited to the resonance frequencies. This of course has its limits, it's not perfect, there will be all sorts of resistive losses, but regardless, these methods can be applied whether you're transferring power, like in wireless energy systems, or you just want to create a good filter. So for signal applications. Now all these look really nice in the simulator, but do they actually work in real life? So next time I will try building some of these circuits, test them out to see how things actually work. But until then, hope you got some useful information after this, leave your thoughts in the comments, thank you for watching, make sure to subscribe to be updated with all my latest videos, and see you next time. Bye bye.